Hey everybody, check it out. We're making these today. It's the perfect rug for my dollhouse or the perfect coaster for my hot tea. Or you can fold it in half. Maybe if you wove a little bit longer one, it would be better. Sew up the sides and make a long string to wear it as a necklace to put all my special rocks in. Anyway, super fun. This is what we're making. I'm going to show you how. And what you need is cardboard, a small piece about the size of an adult hand is good, um, some scissors, and some string. I have my string that we dyed yesterday with onion skins. That was so fun. And I have some other kinds of string that I'm also going to use just for color and for fun. So take your piece of cardboard um, once you've cut it, and you're going to need notches in the top. I've done eight notches. Um, an even number is nice because then at the end, when you have your ends sticking up from your dollhouse rug, you can tie them together. I did seven on this one and I had an odd man out, so that was a little bit interesting. Um, an even number is nice because then they all get paired up. Here's the string I've decided to use for my warp. So I'm going to pull to the end here and I'm going to dangle a piece of the end here and then I'm going to notch it in to my notches and hopefully you've cut your notches fairly evenly. I have some one that's a little short so I'm going to make it longer. It's okay if they vary a little bit. It's not going to ruin the project but it's nice if they're close and then I'm going to I'm going to hold on to the end of my string and I'm going to whoops I'm going to pull down to the bottom notch and put it under and then I'm going to pull up to the second top notch and then to the bottom and we're just going to wrap around and around and around and around and around until we've got them all wrapping as tight as you can because the warp needs to be strong and straight and then with this tail and this tail I'm going to tie them together with just a an overhand knot. There we go. You don't have to use cardboard if you have people in your household who like to use wood and do things in the shop they might be willing to cut you one of these out of some plywood or other pieces of wood and put the notches in and then you'd have a permanent one that won't melt if it gets wet cardboard tends to melt in the rain. Um, I also have ordered one used that's made from wood like this for a much longer term weaving project. This big a balloon takes a long time which is why I suggest starting with this size because you can finish this in less than a day. In fact I think I finished this one in about 30 minutes. It's really satisfying to have something that you can finish and feel good about after a short time. And it is helpful to have some tools for going across with. Um, these are, this is the shuttle that came with the one I bought. So I would wrap my yarn around the middle for my weaving and then I would go do my unders and overs. I would do my unders and overs with this. how that works and then when I got all the way across I would pull it through and then back and forth. Likewise this tool you stick the yarn through the end and then you can do your over unders with that or I like to use this uh, dull needle that I use for my knitting projects and it also works for over and unders but if all you have is these you are set. It will work out just fine. I also like to get a stick if you're outside or a chopstick from the kitchen um, and use it to prop up my warps like this. <laughs> there we go. Propping up the warps and that way it's a little bit easier to get my fingers over and under around these warps. So grab your first string 
And for your weft, the part that goes across is called the weft. The part that goes up and down and is the strong part is called the warp. And I'm just going to tie a very simple knot at the top, just one time around like that, and then tighten it down. And what I like to do, especially with kiddos when they're first starting out, is tuck that in the top notch so that it's not in the way. All right, and here we go. Here we go, we're waltzing among the weeds of green. We're gonna weave across, we're gonna weave across. <laughs> This is what you'll be doing for most of the time that you're working on this project. It's a good time to think about things you're thankful for. All right, I've gone one time across. Now I'm going to go around my end one and under the one next to it. If I can grab it, there we go. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, sound effects are helpful. All right, two rows. So now I'm going to I'm going to hold this out a little bit and then pull this tight and I'm going to use my fingers to scrunch it up together and then tighten it down. You'll notice as you go that the the warps on the two ends sometimes tend to bow in and that's why I'm holding this one in that direction while I'm pulling the other direction. If they do bow it's not it doesn't really matter it's just um, you don't want it to get too scrunched up because then things can get difficult to weave so you want to try to keep it a little bit straight. All right so then if you wanted to change colors you can either tie these two ends together or what I prefer is to just leave that one and I'm going to overlap my new color right alongside it as if they were one string. So I'm going to copy, it's going to copy its buddy and they're going to go together exactly the same for a short distance, like so. So see how the new one is going in the same place as the old one, but now this one's going to go bye-bye. I'm not going to weave with it anymore. I'm just going to weave with this one. Like so. Turns out it's a bit tricky doing this backwards. <laughs> Good practice for the old brain. This is an excellent activity to work on your focus and concentration, kiddos. It is a good thing your brain skills. Alright, so I've gotten all the way across with my new color. I'm going to squish it up and tighten it up. So this end I would cut off later, but that gives you the basic idea of changing colors, which you can do as often as you want. And then you'll just keep on going all the way down. And you can move your, if you have a warp support, you can move it as needed. Once you've woven this part, you move it up. And then when you get to the end, just like we did this knot, you'll do one here or here. Turn it over and get your scissors. Oh, it's the exciting part. You've waited a long time. And then you cut all the way across, right across in the middle. I'm going to do it for pretend because mine's not done yet. And then these come up and these go down and you can peel it off of the notches and you will have something like this that you can use as your dollhouse rug or your hot tea coaster or make into a pouch or I actually had one kiddo um, she had a longer a longer loom and she had a long ends like this and she made a bow tie for her dog to wear how cool is that all right, friends, it's been fun weaving with you. Please show me pictures of what you make and do like and subscribe so we can keep doing projects together. This is so much fun, and I'll see you tomorrow.